Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain without remorse. This movie tells the story of an elite Navy SEAL who uncovers a covert plot that threatens to engulf the United States and Russia in an all-out war. Will he be able to avenge the death of his wife and child, who were killed sadistically? Let's find out in Without Remorse. Without Remorse begins with a team of the U.S. Navy SEALs who must free a CIA spy who is being held captive by the Syrian army. But after successfully freeing the hostage, team leader John Kelly found out that they were not at the Syrian army headquarters but in Russia. Realizing their mistake, they planned to leave the place immediately. Unfortunately, as they descended, they were attacked by an RPG sent by a group of troops. The attack made a hole in the floor they were standing on, causing the entire squad to fall to the ground floor. Kelly immediately launched a counterattack, while Robert, a CIA agent who participated in the mission, preferred to save the hostage. After slaughtering all the enemy troops, Kelly and his surviving troops and Robert and the hostages they saved ran to the helicopter that was waiting for them. Kelly vented his anger because he felt that Robert was setting him up to attack the Russian army base, but Robert said he didn't know that at all. He had no intention of trapping them. Three months later, Kelly has retired from the military and spends his days with his family. He has a wife named Pam who was pregnant with their first child. At that time, Kelly was visiting a close friend's house and told about his new experience as a security guard. Elsewhere, one of Kelly's friends who was on a hostage rescue mission in Syria is seen spending time with his little family. But unfortunately for him, when he was leaving the house to take out the trash, he was hit by a speeding car. His daughter screamed hysterically seeing him dead in front of her eyes. Then, one by one Kelly's friends who took part in a secret mission in Syria were killed by a group of unknown people. One night, Kelly and his wife were getting ready to sleep in the upstairs bedroom, but Kelly, who couldn't sleep, decided to go downstairs to eat a snack and listen to music. Suddenly, the electricity in his house went out and several people sneaked into his house, towards the bedroom. The stranger shot straight at the bed where Pam was fast asleep. Hearing a commotion from upstairs, Kelly rushed to get his gun. He saw the shadow of a person and immediately shot it. Although he later managed to shoot several people dead, he was shot quite badly. Luckily, one person who intended to shoot Kelly ran out of bullets. Without trying any further, he left Kelly's house. The following day, Kelly had been taken to the hospital with a fairly severe gunshot wound. After the incident, an important meeting was held between CIA officials and the SEALs. Robert told the chronology of what happened when Kelly's squad team freed the hostage at the meeting. They finally decided to investigate the case. In the hospital, Kelly regained consciousness. However, he was extremely sad to learn that his wife and the child in her womb had died horribly. When Karen, his former SEAL boss, visits him, Kelly begs her to give him the names of the people who attacked him. However, Karen informs him that the case is under investigation. She did not know who was behind the attack. A few days later, Karen received an invitation to a closed-door meeting with Robert and Secretary of Defense Thomas Clay in Washington, D.C. During the meeting, Robert tells them that the killers of Kelly's wife are Russian soldiers who are members of the FSB or Federal Security Service of the Russian Federation. They did that in retaliation for the Kelly team's attack on the FSB headquarters in Aleppo, Syria. Worse, America will close the case because it does not want to cause trouble with Russia. However, Karen could not accept the decision. Time changes. Kelly is still undergoing training sessions to recover his physical condition. Until one day, Karen came to tell him that the attack's perpetrators were Russian soldiers. But the case has been closed. Concerned about Kelly, Karen gives him files and photos of a passport maker named Andre. It was he who had helped the Russian army to enter America. So most likely, Andre knows the mastermind of the attack that occurred. That night, after a training session, Kelly returned to his house and doused himself with alcohol. Then, he went to Andre's office. Kelly clashed with two of Andre's bodyguards by pretending to be drunk and walking unsteadily. Seeing Andre had got into his car, Kelly immediately returned to his car. He followed Andre and crashed his car so that Andre's car was blocked. Andre's car was squeezed between a truck and a sedan, making it difficult for him to open the car door. Later, Kelly set Andre's car on fire before he broke through the fire and got into the car. Pointing a gun, he threatens Andre to tell him the name of the one who attacked him and killed his wife. Andre refuses to tell him, prompting Kelly to shoot Andre in the leg to get him to open his mouth. He eventually divulged one name, Viktor Rykov. The attack on Andre made relations between America and Russia even more heated. Political observers even predicted that the incident could trigger a new Cold War. One day, Karen visits Kelly, who has been detained in prison after Andre's assault incident. There, Kelly tells Karen that he will kill the assassin, no matter where he is. 
Shortly after Kelly returned to his prison cell, several prison officers took him by force. Kelly refuses to comply with their wishes, and so he fights against them barehanded. The officers could not help but stop their attack after Kelly took a prison officer hostage. They then left the cell one by one. Next, a messenger Clay sent asked Kelly to come with him. Kelly complied and was taken to the office. When he got there, he was asked to identify the row of photos and the name he got from Andre. After mentioning Viktor Rykov's name, Robert informs him that Viktor Rykov is an ex-Spetsnaz officer. He became a Russian spy while in America and had been a long-time target of the CIA. But the CIA had a hard time catching him. Based on information from CIA intelligence, Viktor is currently hiding in Murmansk, Russia. Knowing that his wife's killer is still alive, Kelly offers to help Victor catch the CIA, despite initially refusing. Clay agrees on the condition that when the mission is complete, Kelly must return to prison. Kelly with Karen and the CIA team, prepare to depart on a plane. After a few hours, the plane approached Russian territory. Kelly was preparing to jump off the plane when suddenly their plane was attacked by Russian warplanes. The attack caused the plane's wings to catch fire. The plane then slid rapidly down and fell into the Barents Sea. The collision occurred when the plane and water began to enter the plane's cabin. Kelly and the rest of the squad tried to get out, and they finally managed to survive. Using a Zodiac boat, they headed straight for the Russian border. Arriving at a safe house, Kelly said that the attack on their plane would be in their favor now that the Russians assumed they were all dead. But at the same time, Kelly became suspicious of Robert who did not come with them. He assumes that Robert may have betrayed him, so the Russians know of their arrival. Eventually, Kelly reunites with Robert in Murmansk where Robert is seen hanging out with some Russians. An angry Kelly immediately attacks Robert, accusing him of treason for being a Russian informant. Robert dismissed Kelly's accusations, saying he was in Murmansk knowing that the plane carrying Kelly had been attacked. He thought the whole team was dead, so he came with two assassins to kill Victor. He had known Victor was in an apartment in this city. Hearing Robert repeatedly swear that he is not a traitor, Kelly finally believes in him. In the evening, Kelly, Karen and the team storm Victor's hideout but they found Victor was already waiting for their arrival. Strangely again, Victor is seen wearing a suicide vest. Sitting and holding a bomb trigger, Victor said that Kelly and his troops were just pawns made by America so they could go to war with Russia. Pawns like them will be sacrificed to achieve the king's wishes. After he finished speaking, Victor pressed the button. The bomb instantly exploded, destroying the room. Kelly immediately checked all the members, who luckily survived. But suddenly, a sniper fires at them, and one of their troops is killed. The sniper even killed two Russian policemen who were on patrol outside the building, so it is certain that Russia will accuse Kelly and the others of killing the two policemen. The sniper kept shooting at them, forcing them all to hide in complete darkness in the ruins of Victor's apartment. But then, Kelly sneaks through a hole in the wall after learning where the sniper is hiding. Finally, they manage to knock out the sniper. Unfortunately, outside the apartment building, the Russian police and soldiers had surrounded them. Kelly ordered his troops to flee through the back lane while he faced the police and Russian soldiers. Kelly starts throwing grenades at the parked car as Karen and her squad manage to escape. The gunfight between Kelly and the Russian soldiers continued. While Kelly is on the ground floor, he throws a bomb that kills many Russian soldiers. Finally, Kelly managed to escape the encirclement of the Russian army by wearing a Russian army uniform and covering his face with a tear gas mask. He walked unsteadily and got into a car, then fled to his team's location. The following day, with his injuries, Kelly nearly passed out while driving. Luckily, he had arrived at the location where his team had gathered. All of them, including Robert, immediately left Russia by ship. They ponder Victor's words in the middle of the sea that they are all pawns to fulfill the king's wish. Robert suggests that Kelly fake his death to be free to find out the mastermind behind all these events. In Washington, Kelly kidnaps Clay while he is in a restaurant restroom. Kelly then interrogated him while threatening to hunt down his family as revenge for all the incidents he experienced. Clay finally tells the reason why he sent Kelly on the mission. America intends to go to war against Russia to boost the economy, and finally they have a good reason to be able to colonize and be feared by the world. Clay is also trying to unite the American people to support their country against a common enemy, Russia. Kelly and his team are nothing more than bait. All these reasons made Kelly even angrier. He then sank his car into the Potomac River drowning Clay that was still in the car. A few days later, Clay was pronounced dead by suicide and his body was buried in a military ceremony. Meanwhile, Kelly, who was declared dead while flying to Russia, was buried next to his wife's grave, thus escaping his prison sentence. At the end of the film, Robert hands over the voice recording that Kelly took just before he kills Clay to the president. On the other hand, with Karen's help, Kelly will start a new life outside America under a new identity. 
The message of this film is that someone who has joined the military must be ready to sacrifice himself for the country. Unfortunately, sometimes their sacrifices are in vain, thanks to people who use their position and power for greed.